After saving the president's daughter, what I got from him wasn't gratitude but a pink slip. Despite my good intentions, I was treated like a criminal, which made me furious. Yet, three days later, an onslaught of calls from a weeping president and his daughter. I'm John, a mid-level employee in my early 30s, single. The woman who framed me is in her 20s, my direct subordinate, also single. And the worst part? This woman is the president's daughter, nicknamed Princess. I work in an e-commerce department. Princess joined us six months ago, a clear case of nepotism. Our department is divided into two teams. And fate had it that Princess was assigned to my team. That's when my misfortune began. It seems she started disliking me as soon as she saw my looks. Admittedly, I'm the introverted type, not someone who's been fawned over for my looks. But I've always prided myself on cleanliness, never been disliked for my appearance before. I realized I was disliked because I accidentally overheard Princess's outburst to the president. That John, the team leader, is so ugly I can't stand it. It's hard enough being in the same company, but the same department is unbearable. Our company is in large, and the president's office is just a small room, raise your voice, and it spills outside. From the start, Princess would grimace openly at me, passing documents through others instead of directly to me. The disdain was clear. So, I didn't bother reaching out more than necessary, trying to be considerate. But being disliked for my looks, there wasn't an immediate solution, which was troubling. Her behavior was affecting work, so I had to address it. Princess, if you have something to say, you can tell me directly instead of through someone else. It saves everyone time. If you prefer not to speak to me, an email would do, I suggested. Ah, uh, yes. She replied, looking away. Given her attitude, I doubted it would change anything, but then came her can't deal with the ugly comment in the president's office. When it came to the work that was assigned to the young lady, the president told her. Just leave the administrative work to me. And the young lady was completely out of her power. She had no interest in her job. I found myself wishing she could be transferred, as she was more a burden than help. Despite the commotion in the president's office, nothing changed. The president said nothing, Princess's attitude remained the same, and life went on. One day, I attended a crucial meeting with a major client. Successful negotiations could significantly benefit the company. The meeting ran long, and it was past 1.30 p.m. when I took a late lunch break. Rushing to my usual diner, I spotted a woman sitting on the sidewalk. It was Princess. Are you okay? I asked, forgetting she disliked me, sensing something was wrong. Looking up, her complexion was pale, almost ashen, clearly unwell. Remembering her mentioning at a party that she has hypoglycemia and avoids alcohol, I bought a sports drink from a nearby vending machine. She started drinking it right away, seemingly in need due to low blood sugar. I was hungry, and the diner was about to close for lunch, but her well-being took precedence. I want to lie down. She said, attempting to recline on the dirty ground, so I hurriedly stopped her. Let's get back to the office. You can rest there. Can you stand? I'll support you. I offered, crouching down to make it easier for her to grab my shoulder or arm for support as we headed back. Upon arrival, I found a female colleague and asked. Could you take Princess to the break room? She's feeling a bit under the weather. Then left for the diner. Unfortunately, lunchtime was over, and I ended up buying a convenience store sandwich eating it in the eating area with a heavy heart. Upon returning to the office after my break, I noticed the young lady was gone, possibly left early due to feeling unsteady. Just as I was pondering this, a co-worker informed me. The boss was looking for you, John. Prompting me to head straight to the president's office. You! What have you done to my daughter? I was immediately greeted with the president's yelling as I entered. Beside him stood the young lady, quietly crying. What seems to be the issue? I've heard you touched my daughter. What was your intention? Excuse me? Confused, I found myself accused of something I couldn't recall. Taking advantage of her illness to touch her. This is a crime. I did no such thing. What are you talking about? Have you already forgotten today's events? The mention of today made me think, could he be referring to earlier? But I hadn't done anything wrong. 
I helped her because she was sitting on the ground earlier. Surely, you don't mean that? A rescue? That's obviously a lie. An absolute lie. You must have done something terrible. I've heard the details from my daughter. If you're remorseful, say it yourself. Apparently, the president was furious about something the young lady had told him, fully believing her story. Meanwhile, the young lady continued to cry beside the irate president, making it look as though I had indeed committed a crime. I desperately tried to clear the misunderstanding. After all, I hadn't touched her inappropriately. Embarrassing as it may be, I'm not the type of man who would initiate contact with a woman. When we were heading back to the office, she held onto my arm for support. But I did not touch her beyond that. If that's considered a crime, are you suggesting we should ignore a colleague collapsed on the roadside? That's not what I'm saying. It's the act of taking advantage and the confusion that's the problem. I'm telling you, I didn't do anything. The situation was increasingly frustrating, but apologizing would imply guilt. The president demanded, admit what you did, while I maintained, I did nothing wrong. The argument about whether I did or didn't continued. It's despicable to touch her under the guise of having no interactions with women. I, the victim, am saying I was touched. Your denial doesn't change that. If you won't admit it, that's fine. You're dismissed as of today. Now leave this room, leave this company. That's wrongful dismissal. Please, look into it properly. My daughter's word is the truth. Leave now. Realizing it was pointless to argue, I left the president's office, aware that other employees had overheard. The co-worker, Lillian who had assisted the young lady earlier approached, intending to testify on my behalf in the president's office, but returned shortly saying, it was no use. He's completely taking the young lady's word for it. I even recorded it, just in case. She played the recording, in which the president said, Between an employee and my beloved daughter, whom do you think I would believe? Understandable, but he's still the president of the company. That's just irresponsible. Frustrated, I couldn't help but feel angry. Merely for aiding a colleague who felt ill on the street, I was inexplicably fired. Too harsh, isn't it? Regretting the help and overflowing with indignation, why am I the one being fired? I decided to consult a lawyer for a free consultation that very day and sue the company for wrongful dismissal. Being treated as a criminal and dismissed for merely helping was too much. The lawyer advised sending a certified letter to the company, and I awaited their response. But before the letter could be sent, the situation began to unfold. Three days after my dismissal, my phone started ringing incessantly with the president's name appearing. I decided to ignore it initially. After it stopped, the president called again and again, which I also ignored. The cycle of calling and hanging up repeated. Listening to the voicemails, I heard, Please come back. The dismissal is cancelled. Accompanied by a parent sobbing. Certain that something was happening at the company, I contacted Nick to find out more. Then, an unbelievable development unfolded. It turns out, an executive from a major client who had attended the meeting that day had witnessed me helping the young lady. The day after I was fired, it seems this client tried to contact me directly, appreciating the proposal I had presented and wanting to proceed with me as the focal point. The young lady, having answered the call, allegedly told them. That person? He was fired for touching me. Hearing this, another employee hurried to correct her statement, but it was too late. What does this mean? Please put me through to your president immediately. The call was transferred to the president. The young lady rushed to the president's office, where, apparently, the conversation was put on speaker mode, inadvertently sharing the details with the rest of the office. The greater misfortune for the company was that the president's response was on par with the young lady's. In confidence, he committed a criminal act against my daughter. A despicable man who touched my poor daughter. If you're referring to yesterday's incident, I believe there might be a misunderstanding. Excuse me? I witnessed Mr. John assisting a woman on my way to the parking lot, unable to offer my help due to the lack of time. I didn't see the woman's face clearly, but she resembled the young lady you introduced the other day. Yes, that might seem like he was helping, but he apparently touched my daughter. And Mr. John's response? He denied it. That's why he was fired. 
We can't let him tarnish our company's reputation. Excuse me, but did you check the surveillance cameras? Do you have any evidence that this is true? No, we haven't. But my daughter, the victim, told me so. While I understand your concern for your daughter, it's hard to comprehend how a company could discard a valuable employee so recklessly. This approach to internal issues makes us uneasy about continuing our partnership. But it's a crime. The only evidence is your daughter's testimony. It's unacceptable for the head of a company to handle employee disputes this way. We'll have to reconsider our future transactions. This is troubling. Perhaps the employee who eagerly shared the dismissal with a client needs guidance? Goodbye. Following this conversation, the president hurriedly contacted me. Tell the truth. After the call, the president's office was reportedly filled with his loud inquiries towards the young lady. For a small company, losing such a major deal could be devastating. No wonder he called me, sobbing. Hearing this story, I saw it as the perfect opportunity to set things straight and called back the persistently ringing president. He answered within seconds, evidently awaiting my call. The dismissal is withdrawn. Come back immediately and explain to the client. This could ruin our company. What are you going to do? Still sobbing, his demand came from a place of desperation. I can't simply return based on the company's change of heart, especially for such self-serving reasons. And I have no intention of coming back. Once an employee, even your daughter should be treated as such. If personal feelings are going to interfere in employee disputes, perhaps it's best not to hire family. That's why I'm saying I'll take you back. I didn't realize firing you would lead to such a loss. It's troubling. I'll overlook what you did, so just come back and speak to the client. As I said, I have no plans to return to the company. Moreover, I intend to sue for wrongful dismissal and defamation. I'll be seeking compensation. Enough of your jokes. If only you hadn't committed a crime. Indeed, clarifying this matter seems best. Consulting the police about the surveillance footage in the area might provide clarity. There are many cameras around, having the police involved might facilitate a smoother review. I, too, wish to clear my name. The police? You're the accused, and you want to involve the police without a victim's report? I can't accept being labeled a criminal. I'm willing to spend the time and money necessary. Perhaps it was at this point the president began to fear the possibility of his daughter's lie being uncovered. This ordeal has made it painfully clear how inept our president really is. And perhaps, fueled by his daughter's complaints about me, he thought it an opportunity to eliminate me. Ironically, I have contributed significantly to this company. But in the end, it seems employees are just expendable pieces. The young lady, having overheard our exchange, interrupted. Stop it! He didn't touch me. Finally, she spoke up, but her single lie had escalated the situation to this extent. I never liked him from the start because he was unattractive. Trying not to touch me only made it creepier. Is it all lies? All lies. So my daughter's words are the truth, aren't they? Do you understand now that I didn't do it? We'll be in touch through our lawyer. I could hear the panicked president and the defiant young lady, but it seemed like things were resolved, so I hung up the phone. Afterward, the deal was officially called off, and the way I was treated led to other employees wanting to resign. Are you trying to destroy our company? The president reportedly fired his daughter too late to salvage anything. After that, the president contacted me many times, saying in disgustingly polite words, Would you please come back somehow? I'll prepare you for a better position than before and give you a raise. But I said, impossible. The company was in more trouble than I imagined. Even the young lady, before being let go, called to apologize, probably prompted by her father. She never expected her lie would backfire on her too. Through a lawyer, I sued the company and settled for a sum of money. A single mistake by a father turned into such a big deal. Rumor has it the young lady is now unemployed. I hope they continue to live pulling each other down. As for me, I found a new job and am getting along well with everyone around me. Coincidentally, my current company does business with that client. They apologized, saying, If only I had been part of that rescue, none of this would have happened. 
but really, they helped me escape a terrible company. Regardless of the wrongful dismissal, I could have claimed compensation, but it was this client who truly shook the company. Being treated as a criminal is something I hope to avoid in the future.